Hi, it's Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. I'm here today to talk to you about Libra Equinox. Um, now, if you're new to my channel, I'm a galactic and intuitive astrologer, and I try to pull together um, the energies through astrology, but also bring in the fixed stars and the cosmic points um, that we use in galactic astrology to go a little bit deeper and share insight into how the energies of all of these astrological events are influencing us and how we can work with them. Um, so Libra Equinox is taking place on the 22nd of September this year. So not long after the eclipse, which is actually happening later on today as I record this. Um, and you know, the, the equinox, um, there are two in the year. We have a spring equinox and an autumn equinox. So in the northern hemisphere, this will be the autumn equinox. It is when the sun moves into zero degrees of um, the two cardinal signs, either Aries in the springtime or Libra in the autumn, which is what we are heading for at the moment. And, you know, if we add in the two solstices, which are the other two points in the year where the sun moves into either Cancer or Capricorn, Cancer in the summer solstice and Capricorn in the winter solstice, this creates, um, you know, it's it basically serves as a check-in point um, for us to basically invite us to really pause and to reflect. Now, when we are dealing with equinox, so the zero degrees of Libra. This is the point in the year where we are really celebrating and acknowledging and tuning into balance and harmony and equilibrium. Now, with the equinox, there is always an equal amount of light and dark. So, you know, this kind of gives us this opportunity to connect to the stillness and to reflect. Um, obviously, through Libra, you know, there are some themes that come forward and I will go through those. But, you know, for me, um, the the fact that, you know, we have these equinoxes, that we have these solstices, it is sort of a reassurance that, you know, we are in this constant cycle, that the sun is constantly moving around the wheel. You know, we come to these points, um, but there is always the knowledge that, you know, we are always moving forward and we are always making progress. So, you know, if you are at a time when things are particularly challenging, it's sort of re reassuring to um, just acknowledge that it's not always going to be like this. You know, the energies will shift, things will change. And equally, you know, if you are in a really sort of positive time and, you know, you're connecting to some really beautiful energies and you're in flow, it's a really lovely opportunity just to, again, pause and show gratitude for that. Because when we show gratitude and we acknowledge how fortunate we are, then we sort of send that out and we receive more of the same. So, you know, it's a really beautiful time to really just stop and reflect. And um, the zero degree point that we're working with at Equinox is very much, um, you know, the number of pure potential. It's like a clean slate. It's starting again. So it's this opportunity to think about what we want to bring in, what we want to manifest, what we want to invite into our worlds and our experience. And also from an astrological point of view, when we pull the chart together for um, the equinox, we almost have like a map or a blueprint for the next three months in the lead up to the solstice. So we can see sort of the key themes that we're going to be working with. Um, but certainly, you know, it is a really um, sort of potent time for working with the Libra energy um, in the run up to what will be a solar eclipse in Libra um, about 10 days after the equinox on the 2nd of October. And the themes that we are very much focusing on when we're in Libra season are themes of equality, equilibrium, balance, harmony, peace. And um, there's also a real sense of justice that comes through because Libra is sort of um, represented by the scales of justice. Um, but it's also very much about relationships. So there is a big focus on relationships and also 
how we relate to our world outside of ourselves, because, you know, this is the axis of Aries and Libra, the self versus the other. And it is about exploring, you know, how other people and other relationships, other situations are effectively a reflection back to us of what is going on in our inner world. So, you know, there is a sort of as within, so without type um, symbolism going on. But, you know, what is important about this Libra equinox in particular, there's a few things. It is happening right in the middle of an eclipse doorway or portal because we have got the Pisces eclipse um, happening today. It's the 17th or, or the 18th, depending where you are in the world. Um, and then obviously after the Pisces eclipse, the lunar eclipse, we then have a two week period where we are building up to the solar eclipse in Libra, which will be on the 2nd of October. So we're in this really highly charged, potent time, um, you know, before we even add in the energy of equinox. So, you know, a time of great shifts, a great change, um, you know, things happening quite unexpectedly, potentially, because that is the nature of eclipses, but certainly change that is for the long term. It's very profound, it's very deep, um, and it's very powerful. So, sort of, you know, we've already got that energy um, sort of in the background before we take into account what is happening at Equinox. And um, it is also the first time in 19 years that we have an equinox, a Libra equinox taking place while the nodes are on this axis of Libra and Aries. So, you know, again, um, as the sun comes to zero degrees of Libra, it is then making its approach to the south node, which will be at six degrees of Libra. And then obviously past um past the south node it then comes to meet the moon at 10 degrees of libra which will trigger this beautiful solar eclipse and um, so again you know we it is really shining a light on and highlighting and empowering the themes of the south node in libra and how those energies are playing out and affecting us and inviting us to work with them so if we just think, you know, I've talked about um, the Libra um, South Node and the Aries North Node in other videos. But just to recap, really, um, you know, especially if you're new to astrology or, you know, it's always useful to sort of um, review things. But when we're working with the South Node energy, it is very much about... Um, especially at a collective level, it is about what are we letting go of? What are we moving away from in order to embrace our evolution and our growth? The South Node is always energy that feels very comfortable. It's very familiar. We're very confident. We know it inside and out. But with that familiarity, there can um, sort of be a sense of complacency. And sometimes as well, you know, things are so familiar that you don't actually notice what is going on sort of, um, you know, in the real picture because you're so sort of programmed or conditioned or just... Um, yeah, almost comforted by what you know. It's like that, um, yeah, that comfort zone that can keep you a little bit trapped. So when we're working with the South Node, you know, it is very much encouraging us to explore where we might have um, outgrown some energy or outgrown a situation. And particularly with Libra, this is about relationships. This is about looking at and being shown without any shadow of a doubt where we are in relationships that are not supporting our growth. Now, this doesn't mean that relationships need to end, but it is almost certain that they need to shift and evolve and grow and change because, you know, that then supports our growth. So, you know, when we're talking about um, sort of where we might be overly familiar or where we've sort of got a little bit stuck um, and maybe even trapped, you know, this can be codependent relationships. I'm not necessarily just talking about people. It might be relationships with systems, with agreements, with the mindsets, with beliefs, um, you know, with situations, with environments. It's just anything where, um, you know, you are no longer sort of in an empowered position and there there is an an um an imbalance of power and energy you know something is benefiting one side of the arrangement or the partnership or the relationship but the other person it's not and obviously you know not everything can be in equal balance and perfect harmony all the time but if it's consistently out of balance then you have to really look at it because that is when the trouble and the problems can start 
And um, so, you know, any areas where you are not trusting yourself, you're not listening to your own judgment, you are perhaps, um, you know, giving power over to someone else, maybe seeing yourself through the eyes of other people um, in detriment to yourself, looking, you know, thinking about what other people think of you rather than what you know to be true. You know, again, everything that is holding you back is really up for review at this time. Um, you know, if you are the kind of person that is always trying to keep the peace, avoid conflict, you know, please everybody else in to the detriment of yourself. Again, this is going to become much more obvious only because it's the university's way of sort of highlighting it, bringing your attention to it so you can look at it and address it. Um, you know, so if you are struggling to make decisions or, you know, make um choices or you're doing everything for everybody else and not yourself again this is likely to be reviewed and you know if you are the kind of person you know and we all do it and um, sort of making decisions or choices in order to keep sort of to have a quiet life to avoid conflict um if you're avoiding the deeper issues then again this is up for review so you know it is about seeking harmony but through um, sort of being more empowered and being more authentic and more true to yourself. Um, and again, you know, we sort of get um, almost programmed to think that putting yourself first is somehow selfish, but actually it isn't. You know, you've heard that old sort of saying, you know, you can't give um, from an empty cup. So again, it is really focusing on what you need, what is important for your growth, you know, trusting your own judgment, trusting your own beliefs um, and really um, sort of giving yourself, um, you know, permission to be more authentic and more and have integrity to who you are. Again, this is a whole sort of um, role of the North Node in Aries. So it's about trusting yourself. It's about making sure that you have boundaries that are really strong, but healthy, you know, that are serving both parties. Because sometimes if you don't have boundaries, it actually affects the other person in a more detrimental or negative way, even though it may not feel like that. You know, I always think of sort of bringing children up, you know, if, if they're not giving boundaries and not given expectations, then how do they know? you know, how to act and behave. And obviously, um, you know, that's just one example, but it's really important that everybody is really clear about where, you know, where you stand and what you will tolerate and what you won't tolerate. As I said, you know, the sun moving towards the south node and then the solar eclipse activating it even further is really going to shine a light on where we are out of balance, where there is um, sort of a lack of harmony or equality or equilibrium, where there are situations or people sort of, you know, in our lives that are, you know, creating um this lack of balance and you know if there is um if there are situations where justice is not being done again that is going to become more obvious i'm not suggesting that everything gets addressed and help healed and solved overnight but again it's just sort of bringing more attention so that we can sort of address things from a more empowered and also a more awakened and informed position and place um, so certainly, you know, it might be the case as we move through these this next um, sort of two week period between the eclipses that, you know, we start to see where we are perhaps in a codependent relationship with someone, with something, with somewhere, you know, um, and you know, I kept getting the, the phrase hiding in plain sight or the elephant in the room. It's something that, you know, we may have been aware of or that we haven't wanted to look at, but the elephant is getting so big, there's no space for it to sort of fit in anymore. You know, it has to be, it has to be dealt with. Or, you know, something that has been so familiar and it, you've got so used to it and it's almost like, you know, this is how it is. You haven't even recognised it as being something that is not healthy it's not promoting your growth and it's not for your highest good so again you know something may be hiding in plain sight which is about to be revealed and the eclipse energy really helps to expose that and shine a light on it so that we can see it and once we see it and we know it and we acknowledge it we can then start to do something about it so this is kind of what we're working towards as the sun moves towards the north node. But at the point of this equinox, what else have we got um, 
sort of on the table to deal with. Well, there is a lot going on. Um, and again, I'm not going to pull everything apart. I don't have a chart to show you in this video today, but I just want to pull out some of the key energies. Now, this is the final equinox um, that we're going to have with Pluto in Capricorn because the Pluto isn't going to come back to Capricorn for at least another 240 years. And the fact that Pluto is at this anoretic degree point, um, he is squaring Venus, which is significant because Venus is also at the anoretic degree of Libra. So, you know, she is at the end of this Libra season, of her Libra season, as the sun just comes in to begin. So, you know, you've got this beautiful sort of start and um, endings as well. And obviously with with um, Pluto at 29 degrees, you know, there is very much a focus on endings and letting go and things being exposed. And um, we've also got the Griner Man, sorry, the Grand Minor Trine with Neptune at um, 28 degrees of Pisces. Uranus is now at 27 degrees of Taurus. So again, you know, we've got these outer planets, you know, talking to each other really harmoniously in a really supportive way, really encouraging deep transformation and breakthrough. And that is then being released through this Neptune and Pisces out into the sort of the void, into the ether, into the one. And again, I've talked about that in previous videos, but, you know, that is very much active at this time. Um, we also have, um, and obviously Pluto in Capricorn is in a trine to the sun because the sun, you know, has just moved out of 29 degrees of Virgo. So there's, st there's still a really strong trine there. So again, you know, the sun is really helping to shine a light on what we need to let go of. Pluto is really sort of exposing information. And again, you know, that is the kind of the elephant in the room, what is hidden in plain sight. There's that energy and Pluto is very much supporting that. Now, the moon is at one degrees of Gemini. So the moon is also trying the um, sun at this time um, and obviously in an outer sign trying to Pluto as well so you've got this beautiful flow of energy but because we've got two air signs trining this Capricorn earth sign um Pluto you know is it is if what is sort of being sort of thrown up through the air which is obviously about energies it's also about ideas information understanding um, where and with when we have the moon and the sun working together in a supportive way, it, it, combining the subconscious and the conscious together, so that we can really start to get a much bigger picture and a much deeper understanding of what is going on and who we are and what is happening. So, Pluto, uh, sort of playing a part in this trine in the Earth sign, is really sort of um, almost grounding the energy in, grounding the understanding and really using it to support our evolution and growth. So again, that's a really beautiful trine. And at one degree in Gemini, the moon is very close to Sedna. Um, the moon is also approaching a trine to the super galactic centre, um, as is the sun is also approaching a conjunction to the supergalactic centre. So we have some really powerful cosmic energies coming into play here too. Um, but, you know, Sedna is very much about sort of going down to the depths in very much the same way that Pluto does. But in order to completely transform through a new understanding and a new mindset and a new belief system, completely transform the self into something entirely new and something very empowered that is much more um, sort of suited and adapted to the space and the energies that we find ourselves in now. So there's an acknowledgement again of this constant shift, this constant evolution and this constant transformation and alchemy that we are constantly experiencing. Um, Neptune is opposing the sun at the time of this equinox. So again, it's an out of sign opposition. Um, but it is very much valid and very influential. So again, there is this sort of push pull between, you know, Neptune wants us to go higher, wants us to let go, to surrender, to step into the void, to trust in the higher self, to trust in a higher sort of picture, a higher vision. Um, whereas, you know, the sun in Libra is sort of saying, well, what about the relationships, you know? 
um, and there is this sort of push pull. But the, the question is, you know, are are we ready to step into the unknown, into the void? Are we ready to take that leap of faith or are we going to hang on to, you know, relationships that may not be serving our greatest good? You know, it's about this real sort of push um, and are, are, can we make this choice? You know, are we ready to really sort of move forward towards our evolution? And obviously, um, you know, the Neptune and the North Node will be meeting and um, not in the not too distant future, which again is going to give us a real boost towards our soul growth in the next stages when that happens. But I'll talk about that when it comes round closer. So we've got Orcus. I talked about Orcus in a recent video, sort of one of the gods of the underworld, very much exposing truth um, and also seeking um sort of consequence for any actions it's very karmic energy and Orcus is opposing Saturn still so again you know there are lessons to be learned lessons to be mastered and um, boundaries to be put in place spiritual mastery to be achieved through the sort of acknowledgement of truth the exposing of truths and also the sort of the, the acknowledgement that you know we can learn lessons we can rise you know we can reach a high level of consciousness and open up more spiritually, but we have to be prepared to kind of look at, you know, what is hidden, go down into the depths, go into the shadows, into the underworld, and really see what is lying there waiting to be exposed. And that is part of the learning, that is part of the lesson. So we also have um, some interesting squares. Mercury is squaring Jupiter. So Jupiter in Gemini wants to kind of know all the facts, get all that information, you know, make sense of the stories and all the, the kind of understanding and all that sort of onslaught and that fast busyness that is going on in terms of our thinking. Um, Mercury is trying to get some clarity and try to sort of pick through what is coming up, you know, what is true, what is not. This is very much about discernment, bringing order, bringing structure, um, you know, and some sort of system in as well through Mercury in Virgo. So again, you know, the, both these... Um, energies Gemini and Virgo are ruled by Mercury so Mercury is really strong at this time and Jupiter is there to expand and to bring again opportunity and growth through but you know there is a little bit of a, a tension there you know it's not necessarily straightforward trying to navigate all this information and these new levels of understanding that are coming through, but there is absolutely a way through it if you remain committed. Venus has got to the end of Libra, whereas the Sun is at the start and the and the South Node is fairly um sort of early on as well in terms of position. So again, you know, there's this sort of understanding that Venus has learned the lessons that she needs to learn almost um through her transit in Libra. So, you know, she's now coming to the point where, you know, she's ready to take those lessons and transform them into something really mean and meaningful through with the cons with the support of Pluto to help us evolve, to help us grow. And we have Jupiter is in a sextile to Chiron in Aries. So again, you know, there's this sort of sense with Jupiter in Gemini that it is the information, the understanding that is helping us to heal our wounds. And with Chiron in Aries, you know, I've said many times it is about the wound of the self, the wound of identity, the wound of not being enough, um, of not... Um, you know, of not sort of stepping into the full sense of who you are and the full acceptance of who you are and, you know, where you fit in as well. So, you know, this, there's a lot going on. Just really briefly, I will talk about some of the key galactic alignments. Um, there's a lot of Pegasus energy in this chart. Um, and Pegasus is the way shower, the pathfinder, the magical winged horse, the messenger. So when we're working with strong Pegasus energy, there is a real sense of having the ability to rise up, to step into a much higher level of consciousness, to be able to see the bigger picture. Pegasus brings the ability to sort of move between realms, between dimensions, to have a completely different and higher perspective of where we are and what is possible. And um, it also 
also helps us to be able to see far ahead. And obviously, you know, we're looking at the horizon. We don't really know what's beyond the horizon at this stage. And it does take a lot of faith and trust in order to just kind of say, right, we're just going to go for it, you know. Um, but, you know, there is this kind of acknowledgement that um, what lies ahead is much more magical and is certainly much more spiritual and much more evolved, but much more elevated from the point of view from where we are now. So again, you know, it's really beautiful. Um, it's encouraging us to rise up, to fly high, to have that faith and that um, and that trust. And I'm sorry if you can hear the uh, there's somebody in the fields behind me doing some sort of harvesting. So sorry about the noise, but I just want to finish this. Um, so we've got some Pleiadian energy as well, particularly with the moon at one degrees of Gemini. So Pleiadian energy is being activated again. That is helping us to kind of step into more heart consciousness you know this is very 5d energies coming through and you know support from our galactic um cousins our galactic relatives at this time to help us push forward and constantly evolve and then the other um sort of alignment is this super galactic center now i've talked about this point several times in many videos but this is really strong cosmic energy and you know the sun is approaching the super galactic center the moon is in a trine pluto is in a trine and um, you know we have the south node is approaching the super galactic center from the other way because the south node moves in retrograde motion so when we have this point activated, it is very much opening up a doorway or a portal or a route through to another way of being, to another universe, to another dimension, to another level of consciousness. It is about stretching our understanding of what is possible, you know, way beyond what we're used to. So this is very much linked to the ascension and the raising of consciousness. And um, it is sort of often you know, ex the expectation that we do have to step into the void because what we are sort of moving into is so beyond our realm of understanding from our current perspective. But again, it is having that faith and that trust to do so. It is also about acknowledging that often because the super galactic center is in Libra, this understanding and this sort of stretching, um, you know, these experiences may come through relationships and partnership and because we are working with Libra, so again, you know, there may be relationships that you just kind of feel drawn to, you know, whether they're serving you or not, you can't escape them because there is so much growth and learning um, and expansion to be had through them. And it's something that you have to engage with. It is non-negotiable. Um, but it is very much about pulling us and inviting us to connect with something that is greater than us, that is out there, you know, um, sort of beyond our 3D reality and experience. But trusting that as we do start to move beyond what we know, um, that, you know, this will open up kind of a new level of understanding. And, you know, we create space for the new to come in. And that higher consciousness is desperately trying to connect with it. It's just kind of getting the energy right um, and that alignment right so that it can happen and then yeah off we go <laughs> we go flying like with pegasus that is for sure um so you know when we're working with super galactic center it is very much like a black hole so you know there is this kind of um understanding that the energies are constantly shifting you know the landscape's changing we don't really know where we are we don't really necessarily feel like we're on solid ground you know especially with the super galactic center it can mean that relationships come and go very quickly um, or relationships are changing and evolving very quickly so again be open you know don't try and hold on to things as they are know and understand and have faith that things are changing but it is for the greater and higher good um and also you know the other beautiful thing with this point is is a real point of um creation and destruction so there is a lot of transmutation going on when this point is active in the chart you know if it's in your natal chart it's probably going to mean that you're working with energies you are able to clear energy potentially depending on where it is and um, but at a greater kind of collective level which is what i'm talking about now this is about transmuting the old the darker energies so what pluto is kind of excavating digging down and bringing up to expose is being transmuted through the air trine through the super galactic center through the libra energy and through the moon and the pleiadian energy in gemini so it is all 
really really beautiful um and i hope you've been able to follow me um, as i chat through again i feel like i'm only just scratching the surface with some of these um videos um but you know i try and pull out what is the most pertinent and what seems sort of the most um i don't know relevant at this time so i will be back i want to talk about the solar eclipse I, there may be a little bit of crossover i'll see what comes through for that but for now i really hope you've enjoyed what i've had to share i wish you a really powerful um and transformative pisces um lunar eclipse you know because this is what we are now in and you know, if you've got comments or feedback or anything sort of, you know, interesting, please, please do share because it's great for me and other people to read what we're all going through. Um, and if you have not um, yet signed up for my newsletter, I do send out a newsletter once a month at the end of each month. So that's just got information on what to expect for the month ahead in terms of the stars, the cosmic points, the astrology. So you can sign up for that on my website, spiralbright.co.uk. And also, you know, if you need help deciphering your galactic chart, um, you know, just by all means, reach out and book a reading with me. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I think that is all for now. The guy stopped or whoever, they've stopped behind me, thankfully. So um, yeah, but I will be back soon. And thank you as ever for your support. <laughs>